everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. Today is Friday, August 5th, I think. Time yep. flies. Well, it's Saturday, August the 6th here. So and August be, 6th, yeah. Jeff is always a day ahead of us. We keep trying to bring him back in time with us, but there's a, there's a rift in the world, and there he is. No. But he can tell you exactly what's happening today here. Yes, that's how we fund the, fund the program. We just take the lotto numbers from <laughs> yesterday and win. Uh, it, if it was only that easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the if politicians would ban it at that point, and only they would have access to it. That's how it works. No, if it was that easy, you, you, the top prize in a lotto would be $1 instead of that's $1 right. billion. Dollars. Yes. <laughs> Except for them, because they can get away with anything. But... <clears throat> Yeah, it's sort of it's sort of funny. So here we are. This is our pre-show. We're just kind of warming mm -hmm. up and taking a look at what we've got. I'll, I'll tell you today. We're going to go over a couple of things on my end. Um, I've got my my new camera bag. I've had for about a month, and this is it. I actually love this camera mm. bag. It's the Think Tank. Remember our yeah. good friends from Think Tank, Kurt and Corey. <clears throat> here we go. So this is the Think Tank. I think it's Perception 40, if I'm not wrong. I think it's the 40. Little cool. thing there, you can fold it onto each other so mm. it doesn't make noise. So now it's quiet. Um, and it's got all sorts of stuff, but I'll show this during the show. Yep, yeah, that's right. So we'll talk about this. Um, we will... I've got some Smug Mug pictures to show you from the... Um, the GH4 enhancement. Now, my GH4 now is almost a full frame camera. Was those pictures of Daisy, the GH4 enhancements? Daisy. Oh, so Daisy the dog? What's your dog's name? No, I don't think I took any of the dog. Oh, wait. Uh, was it outside? Yes. That was with the GH4. Oh, GH4. Okay. Because that was good. That, that. So, because it was really cl clear, but I was having trouble finding that f uh, section that you had on there, so I'll have a look later again. So. Oh, it's yeah, it's under Panasonic, and it's called Metabones. Oh, I couldn't see them. That that I didn't, couldn't get access to that. Didn't show that, so I have to check again. Because you hmm. should have full access to everything there. Yeah, right? all it says it was the <laughs> the ones in there, but not not it had a GH4 and GH8, but no Metabones. Oh, so maybe or maybe it didn't totally proliferate out there. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe that was the same day I sent it. I put them up, and they didn't quite. Oh, make right it i had it to anybody can see it who's got a link well it must be great because i mean the ones just from your gh4 some of the shots so clear i thought well if that did it really good the, if this doing it even better oh, this metal bones uh we'll talk yeah. about this on the show mm. but anyway i think we're ready so if you want yeah. to start the show recording we'll count it down to um three two one hi everyone welcome to tech down over a show about tech, audio, mm. video, photo, gear. Two guys who just like to talk. And we usually have a guest. Today we don't have a guest. Um, or if we do, we're not calling him or her because uh, I don't have any guest information. So if you are a guest and you're watching, wondering where we are, we're sorry. But um, <laughs> Jacqueline left us and she did a really good job of keeping everybody straightened together. And we're trying, sort of. Um, we're getting it sort of together, but we've all been busy and I haven't had too much time to get into, um, too much this week, but, um, hopefully we didn't let anybody down today. I think we had a couple of possible people, but they didn't confirm. So I, I think we're okay. But next to me is Jeff Blanchard, our yes. co-host, good friend and, um, feeling better. He had a bad cold for about yes. a week and or maybe two almost, right? Nearly two. Yeah, that's tough. You know, and it's cold in, in Australia. What are you, like, yeah. 50s? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I don't know what that relates to in Celsius, but I think it is about 11, 10 or 11 degrees top temperatures. So you're probably that's about, still, probably, still not bad compared to a European or a Chicago I'd winter or something the, like that. Well, yeah, they're in the minus, you know, minus yeah. in the zeros. Uh, yeah, you're probably somewhere around 11, yeah, probably what, about 40s? Yeah, and, and then when we get really cold, when it goes to about, say, the 40s, mm -hmm. we think we're dying because it's freezing right. to us. But What's like California? It gets under 60 and people just wear, are wearing mm. fur coats. It's just mm. odd. It's just what you get used to. Anyway, it's always good to catch up, even we don't have a guest, but uh, I quite often like sometimes just having a chat anyway. Sure, sure. And hey, guess what? We have an intro. Here we go. Yeah.
We are back. Yeah. You, know, you know, we're not buying too much stuff right now, so they say. Um, <laughs> but I've been buying a couple of little things. Um, this all goes towards the year-end budget, what we have to do for tax purposes. So we, we just thought a little bit early this year, just to throw our, our sales rep at Sammy's off. I just said, hey, mm -hmm. you know, here's a couple of things. He's like, huh, what? How are you doing that? Uh, but actually, one of these things we didn't get from him because they didn't have it in stock, so I got it from B&H. Oh. Um, you know, we, we both like our Panasonic cameras. They're very mm -hmm. good cameras. I, I have the Panasonic GH4, which is like a mini DSLR, uh, mirrorless. Um, well, actually, DSLM is really what it is. There's, um, it's got no mirror. But anyway, let's, let me start with a couple of things here. Uh, this is my new bag camera oh. bag now this is only when you want to go on your own and you know, you have a couple of things you mm -hmm. want to carry it's not very large but it's you know it can't be on the thick side this thing carries a refrigerator worth of stuff it is <laughs> the think tank uh, uh retrospective 40 i believe it's the 40 um as i hit the mic let me stand up so i can actually show what it's doing while i'm talking this should be good can you hear me okay Yep, just a headless, bo um, <laughs> headless body. <laughs> okay, you good? Yeah. Okay, so here you go. This is the perception. Here's some stuff in there. Um, so what you're seeing here is, here I can just grab in here. Ta -da. This oh, is the camera. GH4. Now the GH4 right now, I've got the Sigma 50 millimeter on. I can do this to make it look better. Um, Always looks better with the yes, I know. Uh, so this is shield the, on it. So this is the uh, 50 millimeter Sigma. But wait, this is a well, there's more. mount. There's more. Mm. Right here. Let me uh, take this off. That's not the GH4 mount. It's about maybe an inch big. That is the new Metabones Speed Booster dot six four x six mm. four seven crop factor this thing is incredible this thing gives you one one more uh stop of light so this is an f 1.4 lens it's probably putting us somewhere in the 0.9 or 0.8 range that's mm. like the voigtlander lenses which basically just live to eat light and with this you can go full wide um aperture and just use your shutter to tighten it up a little bit you don't need very much iso at all probably a hundred at most and you can take pictures that like i've never seen before I mean, these look as good as what i had on the uh da10 what they look like on the um um the d750 i mean it's it's amazing that's with with nikon not to mention the, on the my canon cameras it's just incredible this 50 millimeters are very good full frame lens and on this gh4 right now it looks as almost as good if not as good as some of the other full frame cameras i've got mm. they said it basically makes the gh4 an aps-c super 35 sensor this is a small sensor it's a micro four thirds it's about an but inch sensor a little bit bigger than an inch so this in essence makes it a lot bigger it's like double the size of what it normally is so, or maybe three times as much it's pretty incredible what they've done. Um, actually, we have like a little slideshow we can show, right? So we're mm -hmm. going to go into my Smug Muck account, and we'll show you some of the pictures. I took all of these the first day I got it, pretty much late afternoon, maybe about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, uh, right before the sun started setting. These are all wide open. F1.4, no neutral density. Um, filter on. I've got the Tiffin variable ND for this. I did not have it on. Um, the details are pretty incredible. This is all handheld too, and this is not a stabilized lens. Um, I mean, they're not the most exciting shots. So <laughs> some of them are okay, but um, Just. but the clarity of the shots mm. is what I'm really looking at here, the clarity. And sometimes when you see textures, it was very bright. The sun was just beating down and doesn't really look like and i think here we're probably getting a little bit darker i put the lights on um it just has very good texture the gh4 has always been a pretty good photo camera anyway 
this just adds to it. And I did take some videos as well, and the videos look really clean. Uh, look at the, I mean, look at the sky and all mm. that. The colors. I mean, I'm getting gradients I never really got before. The if you if we zoomed in, we're not zooming in now. But if you mm -hmm. could zoom in on the bushes and the, and you just see a lot of detail. And the thing is, well, on YouTube sometimes you can't see it as clearly, but the, I've seen some of the shots and they're really quite clear. They yeah, this is YouTube, properly. so we're, we're going through several compressions. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he showed some of them. There's a whole mess of them, but um, it's it's just amazing what you can get out of just this. It's a $649 adapter, and it literally will convert a GH4 or any mirrorless camera for that matter. Uh, or any of the ones supported. They don't really tell you which ones are supported. It says it's for mm. select Micro Four Thirds. Well, which select? Uh, you'll have to find yeah. that out after you buy it. Um, that's that's just the disclosure statement. And yeah. um, most so, yeah. oh, well, we never said your model. We didn't say number. yours was. So, <laughs> yes. um, But the quality of this, and you know, the GH4 is still infinitely a very well ergonomically designed camera. Mm. So putting on a heavy lens like this, this is almost a two-pound lens or a pound and a half lens. It's not light. Um, still feels good. I have not yet tried the 70 to 200 Tamron on it. I'll be doing that tonight. These are Canon mounts. I was you just going to say they're Canon, Canon E mounts, is it's it? It's the Canon uh, EF mount for the... Um, EF mount, yeah. I think it's EF. EFS. You have mm. the EFS and then the... Well, EFS and EF are the same mount. Yeah. But this only supports EF lenses. Mm -hmm. So if you have an EFS lens, you're out of luck. Um, but that's okay because EF lenses are actually better. They're, mm -hmm. They let more light in. They're bigger. Um, I think this is a 77 millimeter front. It's, it's got quite a, quite a big lens on it. Um, but in this bag, because that came out, now I've got some other little goodies. Here's my neutral density filter. So that's going to come out. Um, but wait, there's more. Oh. Uh, that's my 35 millimeter lens. This mm -hmm. is the IS lens. I'm going to put it back in only because I don't want to get the, the table so full of stuff I can't get anything out of it. Oh, there's another camera in here. I forgot to tell you. This is oh. my Panasonic WX uh, 991K. This is really this is a pretty good 4K camera. It's a small sensor, but it does a pretty good job. It's I think it's almost an inch sensor, not quite. Uh, it does a pretty good job, and it's it's a cool little camera. They're always good to have those those video ah. cameras because they don't take up much room, and the, the ideal thing is that it can sit on benches. They can do anything. That, uh, been, you don't need a tripod for them, yeah. so they're really good to just have in the bag. 35, uh, 40 millimeter pancake lens. Mm -hmm. From it's got a step motor in it, so it's it's a pretty good little auto focusing lens. And I'll put that back. There's nothing else in there. Um, Oh. Lens cleaner or blower. Mm. Little blower. Yep. <laughs> so this is all in just the inside of this bag, and, and I haven't really filled it that much. Um, you could actually put a lot more in here. Mm. So I've seen people put up to three, four bodies of DSLRs in this thing, and, and they fit. I've got some other attachments here as SD cards. You never know when you might need more. Um, and that Panasonic camera, the, the video camera, does that have a direct HDMI output? It so does. you can use that for your webcam as well? Or? It actually does. You could. Mm. Um, and it just doesn't have a separate mic input, though, does it? Yeah, it does. It does. It does have a it separate does. mic input. I believe input, it does. I haven't used it, but I think you can put mm. like a Rode uh, video mic or something on it. Mm -hmm. There's a zipper here, if you notice as I'm opening this, and that's where I'm putting all my batteries. There's about mm -hmm. seven batteries in here right now. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, I can see. Yeah, you can see. Them. Okay. Um, so those are those compartments. That's what I have inside this thing at the moment. Um, oh wait, wait, more media. And there's more. These are. This is a media holder. There's probably about ten SD and CFast cards mm -hmm. in there. And then here in the front, this is just a little assorted devices. Lens cleaners, USB, um, dongle, a pen for cleaning, lens cap in case you lose one. 
So that's just in the front. And oh, well, you know, you always need a microphone when you travel, right? Oh, oh, yes, yes. So here's the road video mic. Hmm. <laughs> it fits perfectly in there. Um, it's such a. It's not that that big a bag, really, is no. it? It's got everything you need, and in it's it. so comfortable. And the material mm. is like a nice fabric. Um, it's just a really nice bag. And on the back, um, let me move this a little bit. So move it this way. And now you've got another. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, so there's more stuff in here. I've got some cleaners. Um, just some small things. All this, that I think I've got a white balance card somewhere in here. But all this in one little bag that doesn't weigh anything, you can cross, run it across your chest like a messenger, mm -hmm. put it on your shoulder, hold it by the handle, any which way you want, it is comfortable. And it doesn't really stand out as much of anything. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty simple bag. So very happy with this i've looked at quite a few bags and i bought another one it's really popular but I, I thought it was just more trendy than good i found it pretty useless um they had a had a zipper in the front so you could pull a camera out yeah a very small camera not with mm. a battery grip on it i mean this thing has a battery grip and it still fits in here and that's what i like with those bags with the, just the big floppy tops because mm -hmm. it's easy to open and get out and some people say oh but the stuff might fall out well no matter what you it you, won't it won't and as i said if it's going that bad you're in trouble anyway no matter what the yeah. top is if it, and it's got um, <clears throat> if you've got it velcro upside down doing that and everything else so i mean this velcro holds here we go yeah velcro and plus on. these but these bags are designed for you to be carrying and walking around and not to be thrown into the uh you know the the, the your luggage check-in and that it's right. to be carried with you and they said if you've got it upside down well you're the you're the fool carrying it upside down right and so so the only things you saw that i purchased recently are the 50 millimeter sigma <coughs> which you mm -hmm. just saw uh it's a good lens it really is sharp it's very clear pretty quiet um i have to get the right uh focusing when i do video on the gh4 because it can be noisy sometimes as you're moving around mm -hmm. um and I'm almost tempted in the GH4 with video to probably, if I have a, like an interview target, just do manual focus and then just leave awesome. it yeah. there. Because if they're not moving, uh, <coughs> next week we're going to go film at Bistro <coughs> 13. We're going to film Giovanni, the owner over there. Oh, yes. Um, we're going to film him on an interview and then put it up on YouTube. It'll be like a Life Edge show. Oh, say hello for me because I'll remember him, Giovanni. I will. Yeah. Yeah, nice fella. He is, he is. And he's going to have a, a new show on, t on some, either our TV or YouTube where he's going to show mm -hmm. cooking and how he does things. It should be fun. Mm. Um, and so I'll probably bring that gear out. So pretty, pretty impressed with that speed booster. I didn't buy the original one. It didn't look like it did much of anything. And I wasn't that desperate to put Canon lenses on the GH4. But with this mm -hmm. thing... I can take advantage of all the. I've got about six Canon lenses, or maybe seven, and they all, from what I've tested so far, almost every one of them works perfectly. I haven't tested all of them yet, and and that's a great thing, though. That's what I'm I'm looking for, though. I want to uh, go for the GH5 if it ever comes out. I'm just making this up. I don't know whether there is a GH5. It, it is supposedly. But that's what the one I'm wanting because I've got the FZ1000, which mm -hmm. I love that. But it's just one of those bridge cameras, isn't it? You said with yeah. the attached lens on it. Yeah. But for w the the way the Panasonic work and how easy it is to handle all the you know the functions on it, it's one of the best cameras I think I've used to to actually use it manually as well. So if I can get a GH5 and put my Canon lenses on it. And it does the best thing, and well, you can mm -hmm. mount anyway. You can go with all the Sigma and the Tamrons yep. and that. Yeah. And by the looks of that, it, it said it would uh, do the best of both worlds then. It does. And uh, that way you don't lose your investment in Canon. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the Canon 5D Mark IV looks like it's going to be coming out mm -hmm. soon. They're announcing it imminently. Um, that's kind of exciting because all the rumors are right now that it will have 4K. Yep. that it will be a good quality of uh, 4k not 10-bit color but 8-bit is fine i mean let's we're not doing cinema here this is more for for business or mm. for for youtubing or whatever you do so for a corporate shooting camera it should be perfect um 
there were some other things that they said that prob the sensor will probably stay the same, maybe a little bit bigger. They don't know if it's going to be a 24 megapixel or it might even go <laughs> higher. <coughs> or they might do something really interesting and go lower for for higher night shots. That'll be very well, interesting. I don't I, know. I heard, I heard from Petapixel that uh, the other day it was 30 megapixel. 30, okay. Because I said that he was mentioning about that that said... Yeah, stay low for the lower light, mm -hmm. but it's just the marketplace. People, because it's been that for years. Yep. If they didn't increase it, they'd lose the 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 point. And I'm, I think they're probably right because everybody's uh, wrapped up in megapixels these days. Right, which is funny because that doesn't really mm. mean that much. Oh. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they actually come out with. But mm. the lenses should work. They said they're going to come out. They think pricing will be between three and four. That's a little hefty. Because mm. right now, I mean, you can buy a, a, a Mark III for about 2500 or even less right now, which isn't bad for body only. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting. I, that may be the last camera I buy in a long time because at that point, I don't think I need anything new. The only two cameras I want mm. at this point are the, are the GH5 when it comes out and, and the 5D Mark IV. And other than that, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm just not that enthralled about the Sonys. Well, partly because I think they feel like crap. They're so small. Mm. It's, you know, big hands. I'm like, mm, yucky. Um, doesn't appeal to me. It's too tight. Well, it, because it's not always the quality of the things. It's how you perceive the using them as well. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the, the Canon do have that better feel to them, the proper DSLR. And uh, like the Sony's, they may do a great job, but like you said, it is in a smaller body. It suits a lot of people, yeah. but I still think the the proper DSLR just feels better. It is heavier, it is stronger, mm -hmm. but it's much easier to hold. Doesn't overheat. Take a picture with it. No, it doesn't overheat, and the uh, you know your batteries last quite. Oh yeah, for days, I mean, don't they? that alone irritates me because. My, my Panasonic GH4 with two batteries in it, I get a full day. I get eight or mm. nine hours of shooting time. <laughs> That's a lot of shooting time. With mm. a full day, I would probably need eight batteries minimum from Sony. Uh, everybody I've talked to said you get about an hour. Mm. That's not cool. <laughs> so I don't get well, that. That's why when you buy one of their cameras, they supply two batteries. How many other can, uh, cameras supply you two batteries? None yeah. of them do, do yeah, they? Yeah, but they don't give you a battery grip. No. No. So, um, <clears throat> I guess, yeah. Hey, did you hear, uh, you know, uh, one of the things about the drones that uh, are out there in the marketplace, <clears throat> one of the things people didn't like about them because they're flying around and they can be spying on people mm -hmm. in their backyards, and one of the things everybody's been able to console themselves with is that, they don't have any zoom capability. It's fairly wide angle. Yeah. But now, do you see DJI has got one now with the uh, what's it three times optical and two times digital zoom? Interesting. On, on that, but having said that, they've got that with their camera, which will cost the new camera about eight hundred ninety nine dollars if you want to update the camera. Hmm. But of course, when somebody else does that, it's like uh, there's always something else better. There's this new one called. Uh, What's it? Walker Wal announces their uh, drone. It's a, uh, it's around about the four thousand dollar mark, I think it would. But it copies that DJI Inspire. Ah, but okay. Th this one's going to have a sixteen times zoom. Wow. On that, so <laughs> I thought nobody will be safe on that one. It is. I must say this. I don't think it's four K. I think it's a ten eighty p. Okay. But there is one issue with the zoom when you're flying something. Mm. It will distort where you're flying unless you know exactly where you're at. Mm. It's a little riskier. I wonder if they have like two cameras, one for the fl for the pilot and one for what you're actually shooting. Because if you're zooming in while you're flying, yes. you may be you hitting something sooner than you think mm. because it's either too close or too far from you. Hey, um, here's another thing with that one that's uh, changed the boundaries. In most of the drones, you know you roughly get probably maybe a mile's distance out of it. Right with the, the Wi-Fi network it has on it. This one incorporates the 4G phone network, oh, so you can technically control anywhere in the world. You know, that's going to make the CIA really irritated because now yes, you're muscling <laughs> into their territory. I don't, I don't know about that. Because we'll just have to have somebody put the drone somewhere, and then somebody overseas can do it because that's what they said. Be careful because it's totally against FFA, FAA rules. That's right. To do it a, uh, a uh, remote control <coughs> from, I think, a certain distance and that. 
Interesting. But, uh, but people who do the wrong things don't care about rules, do they? No, that would be politicians. <laughs> yes. But I thought that was really great to, to, to see different things happening in the drone market. But I don't know about you, but I'm over them. I just really don't want to get one of them. I, I, you know, I was never th that much into them, but you're right. I'm, I'm over them totally. I, it's overkill. Everybody's doing the same exact shot everywhere. So after a while, you go, okay, well, that's cute. Uh, and you know what's going on? They're all they're all filming B-roll everywhere, so you can find anything you actually needed to shoot. Yeah. So. And they're only doing the good. Why people like the quality and all that is because it's a. Uh, something you don't usually see but i thought there's, there's, so there's so many people doing that just concentrate on uh, doing things on the ground and things like the old osmo i like that better because yeah. that's much better for just going around uh, just making videos on the ground and that so and, and the I osmo does a, a good job it's actually pretty cool and i had it on the bike and when you if you <laughs> go fast people think you're using a drone anyway <laughs> <laughs> i've done that the chasing there, there goes jeff something. he just flew off a cliff whoa <laughs> that's right just doing that there as well so uh actually it's amazing that one you do with the bike and you're on rough ground and you can't tell no it's, it, it's so cool i mean and you were like almost on train track just bouncing mm. and and the drone i mean not the drone but the the osmo is just perfectly still mm. And the only way you can tell when you listen, if you listen to the onboard recording, mm. when I was listening, I thought, oh, my God, this is going to be horrible. <laughs> because all you can hear, <laughs> and you can't <laughs> hear horrible. But the picture was so steady, but it's good to see with that amount of noise and that yeah. that's going on, it keeps it so steady. So, and now so you need to actually get, get a stabilizer for you next time. So you're sitting there bouncing, but you're still just the yes. bike is bouncing. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Well, it's like traction control for a push bike or something yeah. like they do on, yeah. on the cars. And but what that, is so. it, the air ride on the um, on the big trucks? I'm just getting a bit uh, frightened. If you know, years down the track, we'll have we have so many things automatic uh, on that, we just won't be able to do anything. Like Oof. we won't be able to ride a bike unless <laughs> we have an electronics stabilizer control yep. that so stops people from falling off and hurting oh, themselves and suing the manufacturers. Yeah. yeah, soon they'll come out with full body armor, so you don't get to hurt or scrape your elbow or anything. It's like yes, the nanny state is just a wonderful thing. <laughs> Did you ever see? I don't know that that. Uh, comedy sketch thing where somebody fell off something and then they just blew up like a big sumo suit you know? hey that sounds familiar <laughs> sort of like it was a, a personalized airbag so when yeah. they fell over it just exploded and they were, were sort of encased in a big ball <laughs> to yeah. protect and them, afterwards so. you hear the nanny state one you zero yes well yeah, <clears throat> you can't do anything these days no so. no it's almost um, ridiculous the human race has survived pretty well for hundreds of thousands of years or whatever but now the nanny state has to tell you how to breathe wash your teeth do this do that because you can't do it on your own and you're saying before with you know showing some of your images on smug hug and that and take you take a lot of your own pictures i was seeing some, there was some uh controversy about getty images and you know the photos that they've been using i just want to ask a question if you go to one of these stock sites and use one of their photos and pay them and that what happens if they haven't done the right thing and got the, the correct rights are you liable, liable for it they're or? liable not you at that so point they're liable, they're liable. They're liable. Though I don't know, when you sign that contract as you check out, maybe you're liable. I don't know. Mm. Well, but <laughs> good like point. They were saying, they say it's always good <laughs> use your own damn in, damn images. But the, there's a case there at the moment that somebody's suing them, <laughs> and the, it's quite funny though. The I don't think the photographer would have known anybody was using them mm -hmm. except they sued them saying you're using so many images without permission they said uh, well they're my images yeah <laughs> and exactly around the other way so that's a bit of a, a bit of a worry isn't it so yeah, it's interesting but that's that's the thing and we yes, was talking about the other week um you know you upgraded for wirecast 7 yes have you had a look at that yet i played a little bit with it um it's okay so far i'm not that impressed but i, I haven't really jumped into it that hard it couldn't seem to find certain cards I had. I was a little surprised. Mm. I had the Majorwell card. I couldn't find it. So I'm thinking I just needed to reboot, but at the time I didn't have any time. Everything else found the Majorwell, no problem. So I'm wondering how it didn't find it because it doesn't use anything funny. It comes in as a webcam. It mm. should have seen it with no issue at all. It sees my Logitech webcam. Um, I need to test out on devices how well it works. 
I find the interface okay. It's a little <laughs> dark. I don't mind the dark. Some of the stuff is a little small, but okay. Um, quality seems good. I'm, I still think vMix looks and feels better, mm -hmm. but I need to work with it. I need to actually jump in and see if, if how well they're doing. I, I still don't think they have the power that vMix has. Maybe in some things they're better, but not in all things. Um, vMix is amazing what they've done. They keep pushing the boundary of what you can do, and and it's great. And now, now Wirecast runs on Macs and Windows, which vMix doesn't. But I don't know. I think the Macs are becoming irrelevant for streaming. They're not that fast. Um, and for streaming, most people are not using Macs. They're probably using PCs because mm. they're way, way faster. Um, you got more memory. You got more speed, faster boards, faster processors, way faster video cards. On an iMac, you get what they give you. The last one is, what, a 4 gigabyte whatever. Yeah, well, I just got an right. 8 gigabyte card. 8. Mm. Um, for about 400 bucks. And it it's fast. It's super fast. When's a Mac going to come out with an 8 gigabyte card? Probably no time soon. So that's, that's why I'm just going, yeah, the Macs are fun. I actually did use my iMac for about a month recently. And it's back to the office pretty soon. I already took it down and put up a new new workstation. They're just faster. The the Windows machines just run circles around the Macs. And that's why Yeah, I'm, no Mac, Macs are not not renowned for the speed for no. uh, for things like that, but uh, I was uh, you know with that Wirecast what I was interested in is that the new what's it, the mix minus feature that on that? Yeah, I, I haven't tried that yet. I, I would be curious to see how well that works because that would be good. Because that's what I want to find out before I upgrade, because that's one thing I would love to be able to do is do that on a single setup mm -hmm. and have a Skype signal in, because that's where you yep. need it for, isn't it, if you've yep. got a Skype on the same machine. Yep, that's true. So you don't have to have a, a separate machine in that. So. Right, but of course, when you do have Skype on a machine, with it, then you're creating a little more processor. Mm. Then on a, if you're doing that on a Mac, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. But can you still do that on, um, if you use that mix minus, I've got another Dell machine, use that as the desktop presenter machine or not desktop? Uh, probably could, you probably could because the mix minus is only for audio. Yeah. Um, so I can use that as a separate source. Then I would say using so. Using the processor for the Skype. I, I would believe so. Because mm. um, that's the only thing you can do that, but the, you must, you can't do that wirelessly. Right. You and must they do are, that And wired, they are using so. NDI, so... That's good. That's the network device interface, just like vMix. Uh, so that should speed up the whole desktop uh, connection and or desktop capture. So, yeah, I mean, it looks good. I, I just haven't delved into it like I did on the old one. The old one, I, I almost like the way some of the settings were on the old one. This one, everything's sort of mm. more in front of you, sort of. It's a little different. Um, I just haven't played that much with it. Uh, I'll let you know probably soon. I'll, I'll probably play with it this weekend just to get more familiar with it. Now, mm -hmm. talking not so much about streaming, but I have been playing a lot with DaVinci Resolve 12.5. Oh, okay. And you know, for a free video editor, mm -hmm. color corrector, output, render, media manager, it's pretty darn good. Um, I like the video editor. It reminds me a little bit of Sony Vegas mm -hmm. in, in terms of some of the ease of use, power, quick, timeline edits i think they did a good job and you know the price can't be beat it runs on a mac and windows mm -hmm. so you don't lose uh, your multi computer if you want it or if you want if you only have a mac um i like it i i think it's pretty cool and the color correcting i haven't seen anything as good yet it's amazing what they do with color They're, it's really color grading at its best and it's a node based so you create different nodes and uh, if you don't like something, you can just get rid of a node versus having mm. to undo the whole color thing. So very, very clever. Well, I'll have to download that and give that a try. So when Do you ingest the uh, media into it or does it just refer to it? No. Uh, well, it doesn't bring it into it. it. It refers to it, just like everybody else. Oh, okay. Uh, but you can ingest into it and then, you know, it, but it's going to ingest onto a hard drive somewhere. Mm-hmm. But right. it's really nice. It actually does a really good job of, of editing. It's fast. Um, I like it. I like the interface. I, I like it better than the Premiere interface in some ways. It's less cluttered. It just seems a little more organized. 
Well, and that's the thing is with Premiere Pro and a lot of them, they've got a million and one things to do, but even that without knowing a bit more about it, without knowing how to use your custom desktop spaces and that, mm -hmm. uh, you sometimes just have too much on there. Right. And some people who just want to quickly get in there can just get a, a bit put off because it's just too much. And as you said, most of the things a lot of people do is it's not too advanced. And you get That's used true. to it. You don't want to be too... All you want to do is get it nice, color grade it, and a few cuts here and there, and then you, a few <coughs> titles, and that's about it in most cases. Well, one thing about video, no matter what you do, it's always linear. Hmm. That's right. And if you want anything special you're in, you'll do... If you want effects and that, you'll be out in another uh, another package, create like After Effects, creating, right. taking things out and putting them in, and then you're only going to be editing them into the timeline. So sure. I might give that a, a try because it's always good to have different perspectives on different software. Well, you that, might so. enjoy it. You might like it. Mm. Um, I'm not the biggest Final Cut Pro fan. It's okay. Mm. I like the visual look of it, but I don't like the editing on the timeline. I think it's dog slow. For everything you can do in some tools, it takes three steps to do it in Final Cut, but it, but it's nice looking. Um, I, I don't know. I think Resolve might be better in some ways. and mm. Definitely, I think Pros might like it a little bit better, so I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do like what I'm seeing so far, and it seems to do a good job. I've only played with it a little bit, but it can read MXF files, which also Final Cut can, but Premiere cannot. Mm. So with my XC10, I can't do anything with it with Premiere unless I transcode it first. Now that is a pain. Mm. But with Final Cut Pro and with Resolve, like that. Mm. Reads it beautifully. So Premiere is slowly getting on my list of not interested. And well, what, mm -hmm. uh, What's getting on my nerves so with the... Uh, not so much the, the the product with Adobe, but it's more so now you've got the cloud and you've got constant updates. Mm -hmm. You no sooner figure out what ones get all the features down pat, then they change it all again. I know, I know. Whereas before, at least you used to have about 18 months before I know. anything major changed. But now with the cloud, it's great that you all get the updates, but somebody just shows you how to do something. And by the time you put it into practice, it's changed. And they also again. don't really tell you clearly what the changes are. No, if it said, oh, on this issue, we've just fixed this or changed this, but it's uh, uh, quite a lot. It's good that we've already got this up-to-date software, but nobody's game enough to put books out or anything right. about it because it's out of date. It's not worth doing it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I think the better plan for Adobe wouldn't be to do it the way they do it, which I think really sucks. Why don't you do a, a, a one, two, three, four, or five product cloud? Then you only get the products you need, cafeteria mm. style. That would, to me would make more sense because I don't need half their products. They're a waste of money. Um, and, and I'm hearing, now that they've offshored the whole thing, good luck, Adobe. I, I wish you a <laughs> lot of luck. May you rest in peace. Um, the quality is dropping everywhere. I am hearing problems and problems and more bugs, bugs and more bugs. Yesterday, I was playing with... Um, uh, well, actually, I wasn't playing. I was actually recording something, testing uh, a setup, and I did a two decibel in the, in the compander, which I use all the time. Mm -hmm. I upped the output. I was probably about minus eight, minus maybe six, and I said, I want to up it by two decibels. So I up it by two, and I went, ah! <laughs> as, oh, as it exploded in my ears. And then I had to get out of addition to get back in for it to work again. It mm. never had bugs ever since... Our offshore friends got it. It's a mess. Uh, and I've had other problems with, with Audition, which I never had before. I'm getting crackling and popping I never had before. I'm getting all sorts of issues. And I talk to some other people, and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not that good anymore. So thank you, Adobe, for caring so much about your costs and not your quality. But also, as well, what drives it as well, people always wanting change. And if the if they sort of perfected a product, that'd be fine, but that's not good enough. People, we, we all want change, so we demand them to keep changing it. And with that, there's a, a lot of mistakes can be made, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And, and But see, that's, that's bad quality control. That's also no rigor in the engineering or programming. So why are you coming out with so many versions when your people don't know the products well? Hmm. That's that's yeah, that's my complaint. So you know, Ad Ad Adobe sort of on my. Uh, here we go again. You know, they they they've had a bad quality history for a while, especially on offshore products. Mm -hmm. And from everything I've heard, they're totally offshore now. 
people are complaining. Uh, I have friends who go to the forums all the time, and they say that um, they're they're griping about Photoshop. Photoshop never crashed ever. Now it's crashing. I had a crash on me the other day. I I did a calc. I, I forgot what I did. I did something, and it just gone. <laughs> I'm just looking at my desktop. Mm. I went, ah, memory leak. How cute. Um, you know, in today's day and age, memory leaks you really shouldn't have them. Uh, they have mm. t- they have software to test for memory leaks, and I don't know what they're doing. Um, but these are these are software packages that were always solid, and now they're buggy. That's that's a bad sign. And all all you need is a smart competitor, maybe Autodesk or somebody who's got enough money to say, "Hey, we can beat these guys now," mm. because if that's the kind of quality they're putting out, they should be easy to beat. And there's so much software out there that is uh, com- uh, is comparable to that. It's just it doesn't have the name. It's a bit like a lot of things. They survive a long time. Right. It's like a lot in the Canon cameras. They do do a great product, but they, sh- they probably would be greater the, the, than they are now if they just concentrated a little bit more on the things people wanted, like the 4K. But I think they've just said, no, we can do. We can still survive with that. Well, you know what but I've been hearing recently, and I agree totally. People are finally saying, you know, we really don't need 4K. Mm. They don't. There are some 4K TVs, but there's very little, if any, 4K content. And frankly, really, the image is nice, but if you get a good 1080p, it's not that much worse. TVs will upscale the 1080p to 4K beautifully. You can't tell it wasn't shot in 4K usually. So do you need a 4K camera? Oh, sure, it's great to have one. Do you need it? really and if you're doing corporate video when your final result is 360p what does it matter um, well, and that's that's the thing is a lot of the time you'll have the 4k image but you don't want to show it like that you don't want that stack sharpness and right. you, you you shot some most films and that they'll dumb it down to give it that film type look right because if like if you show it as it is with the real top quality it just looks fake I know. And you don't want it. You want it to look like it's a real thing, but you'll just see that it's fake if it's too, the clarity is too much. Yeah, that's sort of like when you look at the cinema cameras, what are they really doing? They're taking out all life in the picture, and then you mm. go back and artificially put it in. <laughs> just kind of wonder sometimes. Yes. Yeah, so because it's all you, flat profiles. You have no color. It's all gray, and then you have to just kind of add your contrast, add your brightness, try to figure out what colors are, or make colors your own. Okay, that gives what, you a cinematic look, but... But for corporate video, that's not very useful. That's what sort of gets me when they use these flat profiles. I know it just means you have to work on every shot, but when you see what it, uh, how yeah. it's filming, you think, my goodness, they look like Dracula or something. In there. It's so dull and like, like half grey and that the shot's in there. Yeah. But I did see one of the cameras. I don't know whether it was a Sony, but one of the Sonys is quite good. When you film in one of those flat profiles, mm-hmm. it gives you the playback on the camera of what it the standard look that it will look like. Oh, interesting. Okay. So you don't so you don't get frightened by the horrible look that you're getting in the viewfinder because it does look shocking those flat profiles. Well, I'll I'll tell you I don't have great eyes and when I looked in the profile of the C100 in the viewfinder, mm. it was so hard to distinguish what was going on there because it was and plus I was in a slightly darker room. So now you have gray in a dark room. I couldn't make anything out. Mm. So I'm looking for other profiles. There are no other profiles. You're you're only in cinema mode, and I went, uh, and that's why I returned it. I, it, it didn't. I, I didn't buy what we needed for what we do, which is more corporate video. Yeah, and you do like I do. I like to film just in a standard uh, color scheme, so I don't do much uh, mm-hmm. color correction. In right. post anyway it's only when you've got a couple of cameras that might film differently that you need to do it yeah and if you most look at the, color, most of the things you do you don't really need to do much color well color grading no and if you do look at color grading what what's the first thing they do contrast and brightness mm. and then gain those are the three main things in color grading because you have to add your contrast because you can't see anything mm-hmm. nothing has any sharpness to it then you add your brightness so that you can see it and make it look sharper and the gain is how much, you know, ISO, if you will, the, the image has. And then you start doing color changes or tweaks based on, on what you remembered or what you think or what you want. But, but first thing, contrast and brightness. And I've seen some, some really nice cinema stuff, but I've also seen some great stuff come out of cameras in just normal, standard, vivid, whatever, uh, neutral mm. formats, and they look beautiful. And you don't have to do much to it other than maybe tweak the contrast and brightness. 
Well, I mean, like that Panasonic you showed before, mm-hmm. if you just look at the quality of that just out of the camera. It is excellent. The Panasonic do a really good job in their video cameras. Yeah. Did you notice that? I, I do. They're, they're mm. sharp. They're bright. The, the color rendering is, is beautiful. Um, they're good. The only thing I don't like about the Panasonics or any of the mirrorless that much is their focus sometimes is a little eh, either mm. too soft or, or it, it just doesn't quite grab as well. And then sometimes they're beautiful. I, it, to me, I find the focus a little unpredictable. Mm. And I know people who felt the same way. It's with, with the Canons, I know what I'm going to get. I rarely don't get mm. what I think I'm getting. It's always exactly right on. With these, I'm a little nervous because it's never quite what I want sometimes. Sometimes I, I'll shoot something, the same settings, it looks great. I change the environment a little bit. Maybe same settings, at least focus-wise, it should work well. And now I'm blurry. And it's like, why but, am I blurry? But I still think it's, uh, you know, it's this computer age that the cameras do the best with the auto-focusing, but it still is only a human can say in that frame without pointing, oh, I want to focus in on that particular point. Right. And that's that still is a computer can't do that. Your cannons and that can have your single point focus, but yes. you still have to point it at that. But if you want that to, to oh, but if you don't see something in the corner of your eye that might, the camera will see it and it will focus in on that. And that's what I find some and and it perfectly comes, it, focus in on that and it picks up on a branch in the top. Oh, I know. Right and you got this beautiful branch that means nothing, mm. but the rest of the image is blurry. It's great. Um, but then, then again, though, I find a, a much better results on auto than if you do manual, and I'll get fifty percent of them out of focus instead of ten percent. Now, so. <laughs> now, on certain cameras like the ADD, the mm-hmm. um, um, the Panasonic GH4, and the other Panasonics, the FZ1000, the, the G8, and all those, is that you have touch focus. Mm. So as long as you press on some, as if you if you're in a fairly static mode, you can't do it for sports or anything, but. It's pretty cool. You touch, and then you can even do the the, the focus um, tracking or racking where you move it, and it just it, you could see the blur going from there to here, and it's really cool the way it can do that. But you know, with the mainframes, you really can, not mainframes. Hello, mainframes. <laughs> uh-huh, back to IT days. I was having a PTSD moment um, <laughs> when you when you look at the uh, full frame cameras. They really can't do that well. None of them have touch screens. No. Except, well, I guess the, the 1DX does, but I don't think it's available everywhere. I forgot. I forget where I saw that, but somebody was saying about uh, equipment and that they just gave this new, brand new piece of equipment camera to you know, a young kid. And the first thing that they did was, I can't swipe it. I can't pinch it. <laughs> I know. And they said, so no matter what you think, that's what this generation is all about. If you give yeah. them a screen that they can't touch, you know that that's what it's all about. It's like, so what? I've got to push a button. I've yep. got to click a menu item to get there and do that. Why yeah. can't I just touch it? Well, you know, it's funny that the the Sony's of all things they have no touch screens or very few. No. At and the low end, I think they very have very menu driven, which would help it a lot, wouldn't it? If the touch screen. Yeah, and their menus are very a little cumbersome. They're not terrible, but they're cumbersome. Um, mm. And no touch screen. So you yeah, go, and they barely about, tilt. About 50, about 50 settings for everything. They do a lot, but when you do a lot on a camera, there's got to be a lot of menus to mm-hmm. to, to navigate through. And, and you only have a, a, a one-hour battery. If you're in the menu too long, your battery drops in no time. Hmm. Well, and that's what I think people don't realize with the mirrorless cameras that... Uh, Whereas the DSLRs don't have that problem, even when you're looking through the viewfinder, well, right. that's that's a little monitor that's going all the time. Right, but the and viewfinder, the viewfinder is sort of useless on a DSLR because you have no idea what you're seeing. I mean, no. you see what you're seeing, but you have no mm. idea what the camera is seeing because you don't see when you change your aperture or anything else. No. So to me, the viewfinder is useless. Mm. Uh, you almost have to look at your live view, then go, okay, I think I got it. Then you might look at your viewfinder once you have it, but you don't really see what you're getting. And to me, I, I don't understand why. DSLRs don't have electronic viewfinders at this point mm. because the whole idea of a DSLR viewfinder is useless today. I mean, to me. But still, still, even then, without one, it does give you days and days worth of batteries because yes. it's not, it chews up very, very little well, right. power in that. Yep. And it just amazes me. I remember when I had my Canon, was it the AE1, the mm-hmm. old film camera? Yeah. And I used to get some damn good shots out of that, and you never had to, never ever saw anything until you got it back from the <laughs> processing thing. And you uh, think, nowadays, you think, 
how did I ever get that where out of 36 shots, I might get a couple of horrible ones, which if I take 36 shots now on a digital camera, I can guarantee probably about 20 of them will be horrible. Yeah, and you had no <laughs> idea what your aperture was or anything. You use light meters and other things yeah. to kind of figure it out. It was interesting. And like, and like when I use them, I, it's, it's strange when I used to use it better and I didn't know much about the camera, but with the things to make it do, you just got a picture. You did the, t um, got the, the light meter in the middle, you did this, and then mm -hmm. it was doing all the right things. You got good shots out of it, but with this, that's what the electronic and automatic is doing now. But uh, yeah. as I said, if you, if you just depend on that, well, you probably don't need one of these good cameras because the, even the cheapest ones on automatic will do about the same thing anyway. I know. I know. And like they said, use automatic to learn what, the setting, what settings the camera is doing. So when mm. you actually try to figure out manual, you have something to guide you. Mm. You know, cameras aren't too bad. They're pretty good at most of it, except when they get confused on focus or what to focus on. Uh, and, okay. then and then also as well, yes, you can have a nice clear shot. That's what the auto says. But sometimes you want a different look. No, I want that to be blurry mm -hmm. and out of focus. I want, I want it to the the light not to be quite so good. It all depends what you're looking for in the photograph for yourself, because. It's like people, the nice, clear, perfect shots is not what everybody's after. A bit like art. Some people like just these brush strokes with just a line through it. But if you do a right. nice portrait with a nice, clear thing, it's just just not uh, not needed anymore. No, so that's true. All depends what you're after. Yep. Well, Jeff, we are at the end of our time. Mm. I think we've gone okay. about 50 minutes already. Yes, that goes quick. It does Just as well quick. we didn't have a guest because we keep talking. That's true. That's true. The guest kind of kind of inhibits us, I guess. No. Mm. <laughs> um, well, anyway, next week I think we have a guest. Um, if I recall correctly, I have to take a look. And then we're off for a couple of weeks till till right after Labor Day. Though, if we have some shows, we can do one. If anything comes up, we can try to do a show. Yes. Um, but I figure we'll definitely take a couple of weeks off between like the last week of August and and Labor Day because nobody's around. Everybody's on vacation, so it should be good. So I'm going to do some filming this weekend, and I think we're going to go maybe this weekend to the Third Street Promenade. I'm just going to film with the GH4 and see what kind of results I get where there's a lot of people and see if you the, know what uh, the, I did that on the Third Street Promenade, just opposite, opposite what's that ice cream place that mm -hmm. you call uh, Ben and Jerry's, is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just opposite Ben and Jerry's, there was a bench there, and I just sat the, the cannon there and just started filming, just sat it on the bench. Yep. And you get some good shots there, just people passing by and all that. Yeah. It's really good. So. Yeah, because I want to see how it focuses with so much action. Mm. To see how well it does with know with getting confused i have to take probably take face tracking off and tracking so it doesn't hold on to anybody mm, but it's a good area to do that and you're close by to the uh, the santa monica pier and that so to yeah. go down there and all, there's all, always good to get some good shots down there should be fun mm. well anyway jeff well you have a great weekend you're in your weekend already Yes, that's right. Yes, so after this, take the dog out for a walk. I don't know. You saw him halfway through the show. He walked in behind me and was going out. <laughs> and he decided to go and lay down. So, no, I'm not seeing. I'm seeing something else. No, no, he's gone back to gone back in his basket to sleep. Uh, downstairs or behind? No, you? no, here, here. He just went behind me and went back again. But he decided he'll go back to sleep. So, okay, that's good for him. <laughs> it's a rough life. It's a dog's life. Yes, right? that's right. Well, have a good one, Jeff, and we'll see you okay. next week. And if you're watching the show, please subscribe and give us your feedback. We like hearing from you. If you have any subjects, topics, or things you'd like us to review, let us know. We will make an effort to do so. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye for now.